Hey cousins, happy Friday. Good morning. I was sitting here reading my devotional and uh, my Bible and reading John chapter 15. I am the vine and I'm reading my Proverbs. Uh, I used to read a Proverbs a day and I haven't been doing that and I want to get back to doing it. And so I'm reading Proverbs 31 and I'm like, oh, this is so powerful. Proverbs 31 is so powerful because it, it talks about the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, right? And then it talks about how every, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. We got some heart issues. That's what the problem is. Uh with the body of Christ. And I was gonna come on this morning and I was gonna do a video about, a lot of you have sent me videos and want me to comment on, you know, certain people in the body of Christ who are basically condemning preachers to hell, basically. Uh, and I, I was gonna come on and talk about how God want all of us to be saved. But I, I, you know, I think I'll do that Sunday morning. No matter how bad or terrible a person is, God wants them to come to him. Ernestio, God loves him. And God wants us to Diddy, God loves him. God wants us to be saved. Pastor Evans, God love him. God wants Robert Morris, God loves him. God wants to say, no matter how terrible people are, Jesus died for all of us. And he loved all of us. He don't love me any different than he loved Ernestio or Diddy. He loved us all the same. And so I, I have a problem with people let's just say prophets, condemning people to hell. No, God wants us all to be saved. No matter what we've done or no matter what the preachers have done, God wants everybody to be saved. God don't want nobody to go to hell. God didn't create hell for humans. But how many of you know we need to turn from our wicked ways and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ? So I'm going to go ahead and read this quick Proverbs. Um, I'm going to come back Sunday and do that. I might do a video on Posha and Simon Late. I don't know how I feel. Because, um, you know, Posha, even Posha. Huh? God want Posha to stop being a hoe. <laughs> Please be sure to subscribe and thumbs up. This is just This is just me sitting here reading uh, Proverbs 31. I love the book of Proverbs. I hope you do too. Be sure to subscribe, thumbs up. If you do not, if you do not have how to read your Bible in one year, listen, pick that up on Amazon. It really gives you a guide as to reading through the Bible in a whole year. If you ever want to read through the Bible, it gives you an overview of reading the Bible in one year, okay? So Proverbs 30, 21, Proverbs 21, listen to what it says. It says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Like the rivers of water, he turns it wherever he wishes. This is one of my favorite verses when it comes to favor. I pray this verse when I need favor. God, the king's heart is in your hand. You will turn the heart wherever you will turn that person's heart towards me. I remember when my baby girl, Lexi, I was trying to get her in a special needs school. And by the time the other school psychologist told me about it, the, the application, application process was almost full. And they said, Ms. Hilton, we have six spots and 25 uh, applications. And I said, that's all right. <laughs> One of those six spots belong to my baby. Come on, somebody. One, I don't care how many applications you got. 
as long as you have a space, one of them belongs to Lexi. I don't care if you got one space. That belongs to my baby. And I went to praying and the fasting and quoting this scripture right here. The king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. It's rare, it's rare. And the Lord made a way for my baby. And they called said, Miss Hilton, Lexi got in. We can't take her for the summer, but she can come sometime. I said, that's all right. And she went to that school from nine till 22. So whenever you need favor in your life, flip on over to Proverbs 21 and 1 and read this verse and meditate on it and pray that God will turn their heart towards it. Now, this don't have to do with no man. I can hear somebody say, oh, you know, I really like Pookie. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that God will turn Pookie's heart towards me. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's not what that's talking about. What you're talking about is witchcraft. No, no, no. We're talking about the favor of God on our lives, wherever we go, whenever we go, and we need favor that God will turn those in authority heart towards us. Come on, church. Verse two, Proverbs 21, verse two. I am reading the New King James Version. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. I should probably put that up here, right? Huh? Every way of a man is right in his own eyes eyes. But you know what I always say? What the Bible say? What the Bible say? It seem right. It seem right. David, it seem right, King David, for you not to be out with the king's when it's time for the kings to be at, at war, it seemed right for you to stay home and sleep. This is how we know David was black because he slept all day and got up in the afternoon. It seemed right, David. It seemed right for you to go out on your, on your porch and look across and see a naked woman washing after her cycle and for you to send for her and get her and lay with her. It seemed right, David. Huh? How many of you cousins, how many of you are doing something that it seemed right? It seemed right to shack up. It seemed right for you to be 10 years a girlfriend and wait for him to marry you. It seemed right. No, no, no. What did the Bible say in context? I always say in context, okay? Because some things is applicable and and some things is not for example when your child sin against god you don't you know throw rocks at him no you don't do that okay that was under the law mm -hmm. verse two every way of a man is right in his own eyes it's right in your eyes but what did god say But the Lord weighs the hearts. There's that word again, the heart. Huh? How many times did we read in the Old Testament, God telling Israel, like, y'all need a new heart? Huh? We got heart issues, y'all. We have heart issues, and we really need to go to God and lay before him and say, God, renew my heart in you. Help me to get a new heart. God talk about a heart of stone, trading heart of stone for a heart of flesh. Flesh doesn't mean carnal, but a heart that can be transformed. Mm -hmm. Verse three, to do righteousness and justice. What does righteousness means? Right standing with God is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. You know you're shacking up, but you're going to bring a big orphan down to the church. No, no, no. To do righteous and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. What's the other scripture that talks about a sacrifice? 
It don't mean nothing if your heart is crooked. Come on, verse four. I gotta go get my nails done this morning. Verse four, a haughty look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are sin. We talked about pride. What is pride? An easy answer for pride is God is wrong and you're right. Pride. Huh. What month is this? Pride month. God is wrong and you're right. That's what pride is. It's, it's, it is now 6.54 a.m. June 26. It's a beautiful sunny day. I live on the corner, so my house, I can see all four sides. Honey, this, the sun is beaming through these blinds. It's beautiful. No, no, no. You think God is a liar and you know what's right. So instead of you saying it's light outside, it's a beautiful sunny day, you going to talk about, no, it's dark out. Did not. The apostles say they will call day, night, and night, day. In other words, God is wrong and you're right. And to me, it's just easier to just line up with God. Whatever God says right is right. Whatever God says wrong is wrong. My daddy always say, do, do right, act right, be right, act right, be right. Think right. Hmm. You live in crooked life and bringing down the tithes and the offering to the storehouse, giving to the poor and so and so. And you think you doing all these sacrifices is going to cover the wrong that you're doing. No, no, ma'am. Verse five. The plans of the diligent leads surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. Let's read that again. Verse five. The plans of the diligent, what does diligent mean? consistently going, doing, consistently reading your Bible, consistently praying, consistently investing time over time over time, precept upon precept. It leads, leads surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. Do you know how many people sitting there waiting to win the lottery? But those of us who got wisdom, for example, I've been investing since I was 24. What's that? The plans of the diligent every two weeks since I was 24 years old, I am 46. Every two weeks, take that money out. Take that money out. Take that money out. When I got my this job that I have now, take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. Invest it. Pour it in. Pour it in. Be diligent. Be diligent. My husband was doing the same thing. And as time, what the Bible says, seed, time. The plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty, but those of everyone who is hasty surely to poverty. And even people who win the lottery, they're broken five to seven years. You know why? They didn't sit down and learn about money. So in five or seven years, they're broke. Look at all these football players and basketball players who got multi-million dollar contract and soon as they break a leg, they're broke. What happened to all that money? Come on, let's read. Getting treasures by a lying tongue is the fleeting fantasy 
of those who seek death. Mm. That's powerful, ain't it? Getting treasure by a lying tongue. Right there, lying tongue. A lying tongue. So that means if you're going to lie to get something, don't do it. If you got to lie to get a husband, don't do it. Now, lying is different from being vague. I tell my ladies, be vague. You don't have to tell him everything you want. Verse 7, come on, verse 7. The violence of the wicked will destroy them because they refuse to do justice. The violence of the wicked will destroy destroy them because they refuse to do justice. And yes, I can hear somebody say there are people, good people who do justice and still violence, still find them. I don't have no answer for that other than we live in a sinful world and a fallen world. But you can't be wicked and think that the violence is not going to find you. You're delusional. Because they refuse to do justice. In other words, do what's right. Do what's right. Verse 8, the way of a guilty man is perverse. Perverse means twisted. Twisted. But as for the pure, his work is right. So the way of the guilty man, what he do is perverse. It is twisted. It is crooked. But as for the pure, mean your heart is pure. You're doing it from the pureness of your heart. His work is right. You going down to the homeless shelter because you have a pure heart. No, me, I can't. I'm, you know, I'll say I write a check. <laughs> Me, I'm not going to be one of the missionaries in Africa laying on the sleep. On the, on the, that's not me. But I'll write you a check. I'll buy a plane ticket for you. I can sit here and teach the word. Figure out what you need to do to be right and act right and be right. Verse 9 this is for single ladies dating for marriage. You see how everybody can get something out of the book of Proverbs. And wives, better to dwell in a corner of a house than a house shared with a contentious woman. Let's see what King James says. I think King James said it a little differently. Okay, Proverbs 21. I'm going to go with my Bible so I don't mess up my spot. My other Bible. Proverbs 21 and 9. Proverbs 21 and 9 says this is the King James. Let me make sure it's the King James Version I'm about to read from. Uh, it is better to dwell in a corner of a house than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Brawling, angry, contentious. Think about it, ladies. Are you the type of woman that your man, your husband, would prefer to go stand and sit on top of the roof? In another place, it says in winter, than to share a house with you? Ask yourself that question. Hmm. Huh. We're not talking about baby mamas and women shacking up. I'm talking to wise boo. We don't we don't shack up over here, okay? Verse 10: the soul of the wicked desires evil. <clears throat> the soul of the wicked. 
What is the soul? The soul is your will, your intellect, and your emotions. The soul, the will of the wicked desires evil. The intellect of the wicked desires evil. The emotions of the wicked desires evil. We were riding in the car yesterday and it came over that Louisiana is the first states that state that want the Ten Commandments in in the school or in each classroom, right? And it's this big legal thing, all separation, church and state. But at the same time in California, in California, a child can change its gender and the school don't have to tell the parents. Think about that. They have a problem with the Ten Commandments being in classrooms, but they don't have a problem with a child, a child, a child that you have custody of, a child who you can't leave at home by yourself, a child, if you spank them, they go and lock you up. A child that you're probably still washing their behinds Huh. My little boy is nine and ever so old. He said, Mommy, can you wash me? Huh? A child that you're feeding, putting food in their mouth, clothes on their back, providing health insurance for life insurance, sending them to the best school, putting on the best clothes saving and investing to send them to go to college. This is your baby that you brought in your belly, mamas, for 10 months. But your child can change their gender, can decide that God is a liar. I know God made me a boy, but I think I'm a girl. That's you saying God is a lie. God don't know what he's doing and he's a fool. Change its gender and the school don't have to tell you. And even if you ask, they don't have to tell you. They even have, I heard, was hearing that somebody sent it to me, these gender closets. You know, the kid can leave the house as a boy in boy clothes and go to school and change it to girl clothes and the schools don't have to tell you. But the, the, they have a problem with the Ten Commandments being in schools, talking about separation of church and state. The soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no favor in his eyes. Read the Bible, beloved. Come on, let's go to verse 11. I got go. When the scoffer is punished, the simple is made wise. Let's go to King James and see what King James says about this. Proverbs 21 and 11. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise. And when the wise is instructed, you receive knowledge. So you have to decide, are you a scoffer, a scorner? Or are you wise? Matter of fact, I have something on the book of Proverbs I need to publish. Just remind me. First of all, let's move on. The righteous God wisely considered the house of the wicked overthrown the wicked for their wickedness. But how many of you know God want them to come to repentance? Huh? God want the wicked, those who fall in the side, by the wayside, those evil to come to uh, come to him. Verse 13, whoso shuts his ear to the cry of the poor will also cry himself and not be heard. The Bible is clear. We give to the poor. For those people who have a problem, bring your tithes and offering down to the storehouse, to the church. I mean, maybe your pastor is not doing anything in the community for it, but if you can see what the church is doing for the poor in the community, bring your tithes and offering, give when the pastor asks. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know the book of Proverbs in Psalms 19, I believe it said you lend to the Lord. So in other words, you give a dollar to the poor, you're lending to God. God is going to give you one dollar back because they don't have the inability to multiply your dollar. <laughs> That's why you bring your tithes and offering down to the storehouse. Yes, yeah, some of it is going to the poor, but some of it is going to the work of the kingdom of God. Verse 14, a gift in secret pacify anger. Uh-oh. Hmm, how many of y'all been secret girlfriends? Huh? H how many secret girlfriends is among us? Raise your hands. Raise your hands, your secret girlfriend, you. How many of y'all, he come over to your house at, at about, you know, 12 o'clock in the morning, lay up with you for a couple of hours, leave about four o'clock before the sun come out. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. <laughs> come on, y'all. Let's read. And a bribe behind the back, strong wrath. It is joy for the just to do justice, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. Mm-hmm. A man who wanders from the way of understanding will rest in the assembly of the dead. A man who wanders, those of you who's going away from the word of the Lord, will rest in the assembly of the dead. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the unfaithful for the upright. So you got to ask yourself, am I righteous? Am I an upright person? Verse 19, better to dwell in the wilderness uh, than with a contentious and angry woman. Let's go to verse 19, King James Version. I keep closing the King James, but I need to leave it open because I like to check in to see because sometimes the King James Version is a little different. Okay, Proverbs 21 and verse 19. 21 and 19 says, there is, it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and angry woman. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine the wilderness, the bushes, the woods? Verse 20, there is, is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. A who? A foolish man. Mm -hmm. So ask yourself, are you a fool? Verse 21, he who follow righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. So ask yourself, am I following righteousness and mercy? Or am I following crookedness, perversions? And if you follow righteousness and mercy, you will find life. You will find righteousness and honor. Verse 22, a wise man scale the city of the mighty and bring down the trusted stronghold. Verse 23, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from trouble. What does guard mean? Watch, protect. What is your soul, your will, your intellect, your emotions? Whoever watch, guard, protect his mouth and tongue, keep his soul from trouble, his soul, his will, his intellect, his emotions. How many of y'all speaking negative things, bad things, death in your life? <clears throat> I heard Gloria Copeland gave a testimony one time that when something was funny, she would say, ah, I'm so blown away. And somebody asked her, do you want to be blown away? She was like, huh, do you want to be blown away? The per She said, no, I don't want to be blown away. So the person said, well, then you need to stop saying you want to be blown away. Years later, they were in a convention and the word came out that there was a tornado coming and it was coming straight to the convention center. And the word came over, it was too late. It was too many people to try to get out of the convention center because where are they going to go? And they stopped what was going on and everybody started praying and command that the tornado turned away. 
And they prayed, they prayed, they prayed, and that tornado did not hit the convention center. And and um, she said later it was on the news how the 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 weather people was saying how the tornado was coming straight for the convention center, but at the point it stopped and then it turned, huh? And the Holy Ghost said to Gloria, "Aren't you glad you stopped saying?" I want to be blown away. You know, little stuff like that. That's why I don't believe in speaking foolishness in my life. I speak life and not death because death and life is in the power of the tongue. You will have what you say. Verse 24, a proud and haughty man. Scoffer is his name. He acts with arrogant pride. What is pride? God is wrong. You're right. Verse 1, 5, desire of the lazy man kills him. Lazy. I don't want no lazy man in my life. And you could tell if a man is lazy based on what he's done with his life, ladies. For his hands refuse to labor. Jesus. But you know what? A lot of y'all ladies choose lazy husband. Lazy man. He covets greedily all day long, but the righteous gives and does not spear. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with wicked intent? What is an abomination? An abomination is something that makes God sick. It makes him want to vomit. Huh? So the sacrifice of the wicked make God wants to vomit, wants to throw up, wants him to puke. How much more when he brings it with wicked intent? So not only is this person wicked, the intention of him bringing this sacrifice is wicked. Jesus, I'm in verse 28. A false witness shall perish, but the man who hears him will speak endlessly. A wicked man hardens his face, but as for the upright, his ways is established. So you have to ask yourself, are you wicked or are you upright? There is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against God. Come on, pride. There is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against God. You're not wiser than God. You don't understand God more than he understands you. You can't have no counsel against God. Huh? There is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against the Lord. Verse 31, the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but deliverance is of the Lord. Sometimes you can prepare as much as you can prepare, but sometimes, and it's good, it's good to prepare. Sometimes deliverance is of the Lord. You, as much as you have prepared, you need God to deliver you and set you free from the situation you're in. Do y'all see why I love the book of Proverbs? Huh? As a matter of fact, I have a book of Proverbs devotional up here. Do y'all see how I love the book of Proverbs? I mean, you could read this book and, and you could get all the wisdom and understanding you need to live your life. You just have to choose to do right, be right, act right, be wicked or righteous, be upright or a scoffer, be just or be wicked. But I love you, boo-boos. I love you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to come on and, and talk about Posha and Simon, Okay. I'm up doing some writing and stuff, but I just wanted to share that with you. When I read that, I was like, oh, I need to share this. And let me tell you, I love the book of Proverbs. I used to read the Proverbs every day. Not as much now, but I'm getting back to it. And it's like every time I read, I see something I didn't read. See, that's how God opened up your understanding and your your understanding of his word. I love you, boo. I love you. Comment below. Do you read the Proverbs today? Have you picked up, pick up the word of wisdom? devotional journal from the book of Proverbs. Let me know and leave a glowing five-star review for me. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.